I'm gonna explain this t-shirt at the end of the video, so stick around. Now, by now, you've undoubtedly heard about the case of the man in Brunswick, Georgia, said by the media to have been a jogger. His name is Amand Arbery. Now to Georgia and the latest developments in a fatal shooting we have been following. Police have arrested and charged two white men for the killing of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery, an unarmed black man who was shot while jogging in his neighborhood back in February. Now, as to the death of Mr. Arbery, both LeBron James and Joe Biden weighed in. First, LeBron James's tweet. We're literally hunted every day, every time we step foot outside the comfort of our homes. Can't even go for a damn jog, man. Like WTF, man, are you kidding me? No, man, FR, are you kidding me? I'm sorry, Amon, rest in paradise, and my prayers and blessings sent to the family. <laughs> my goodness. We are literally hunted every day, every time we leave our homes? Sigh. Just a few facts for Mr. James. Check this out. Fact, of the 400,000 non-homicide violent black-white crimes, 85% are black perp, 15% the other way around. Fact, blacks kill more blacks, nearly 7,000 last year, than the KKK did in its entire history. Fact, a young black man is seven or more times more likely to be murdered than a young white man, and again, almost always by a young black man. Fact, blacks kill two times as many whites, 500, as whites kill blacks, 250. Fact, blacks, 13% of the population, commit 50% of the murders. Fact, of the 50% of the homicides in this country that are committed by blacks, they are almost always committed by other blacks, usually young black men. This means roughly 3% of the population is responsible for nearly half of the nation's homicides. Fact, the number one cause of preventable deaths in this country for young white men is accidents, you know, like car accidents. The number one cause of preventable deaths in this country for young black men, homicide. Fact, Chicago, murder capital of the country in terms of absolute numbers. The city is a third black, a third white, a third Hispanic. Blacks account for 70% of the homicides, and by the way, nearly 75% of them are unsolved. Now, these awful crime stats stem from one primary reason, the absence of fathers in the home. Forget about Larry Elder. Barack Obama once said, a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. This is the number one problem facing the country, not white racists hunting down black joggers for crying out loud. Speaking of LeBron James and his irresponsible comment, do you know that LeBron James once claimed that he was a victim of a hate crime, except the hate crime remains unsolved, and some cynics believe it never happened? LeBron James, speaking out just a short time ago, police say a racist slur was spray-painted across his home. James, who is now preparing for the NBA Finals, talking about his family and about race in America. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. On the eve of Game 1 of the NBA Finals, Cleveland Cavalier star LeBron James is speaking out about vandalism at his L.A. home. My family is safe. Um, at the end of the day, they're safe, and that's the most important. The front gate spray-painted with the N-word. No matter how famous you are, no matter how many people admire you, um, you know, being, being black in America is, is tough. And... Uh, and we got a long way to go, um, you know, for, for us as a society and for us as African Americans until we, until we feel equal. Ah, but the plot thickens. A website called Outkick the Coverage came up with a couple of problems with LeBron's allegation. Look at this. The graffiti was immediately painted over and still not visible when the police arrived. Why would someone claim there's a hate crime and then paint it over before the cops show up? LeBron said the reason they painted over was because they didn't want it to be visible in the neighborhood. But if you look at the gate, it's a pocket gate. Once it slides closed, you can't see it. So he easily could have concealed it had he wanted to. Why was the $21 million mansion surveillance cameras not working? And why were no other cameras in this pricey neighborhood working? Those are just some of the problems. Now, as to Mr. Arbery was an innocent man just jogging through a neighborhood when two racists tracked him down, that plot also thickens. 
It turns out Mr. Aubrey, while he was jogging, took a detour. This video obtained by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation from a camera about a block away from where he was shot shows a man in a white shirt and shorts going into and around a home under construction. The timestamp shows it happened within minutes of a 911 call reporting a burglary. And reportedly there's even more video, several instances in which Mr. Aubrey dropped by that site and sort of lingered around. Now this doesn't mean that the two men had a right to use deadly force and track them down, but it does complicate the narrative. Innocent black man jogging through neighborhood and got mowed down by white racists. And by the way, what makes you think these two white guys concerned about vandalism in their neighborhood would be any more happy if the suspected burglar or vandal was white? This brings up to Mr. Biden, who referred to the killing of Mr. Arbery as a murder. So much for due process. Isn't that interesting? Joe Biden is being accused of a former staffer of a sexual assault and he wants the presumption of innocence and due process, but he doesn't want to provide it to these two white guys suspected of killing Mr. Aubrey. None dare say hypocrisy. Now, remember that shooting years ago in New York, an immigrant named Amadou Diallo was asked to show ID. He mistook the directions and reached for his wallet. The police assumed it was a gun and fired several shots at him. Hillary pronounced it a murder. And then when the police objected and said something about due process and presumption of innocence, she then said, well, she misspoke. Turns out a jury of 12, four blacks, eight men, white, found the cops involved in the shooting of Mr. Diallo not guilty. And even after the cops were found not guilty, that didn't stop Bill Clinton and Al Sharpton from assuming that the cops killed this man because of this man's race. We want a boycott city. We will hold our wallet until the federal government brings charges of civil rights on the case of Amadou Diallo. We will choose the target. We've had all the turmoil in New York City over this Diallo case. And I don't want, as I said before, I don't pretend to, for a moment to second guess the jury. I didn't sit there and listen to the evidence. But I know most people in America of all races believe that if it had been a young white man in a young all-white neighborhood, it probably wouldn't have happened. Never mind studies showing that cops are more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger on a black suspect than a white suspect. The youngest tenured professor in the history of Harvard is an economics professor named Rowling Fryer, happened to be black. He assumed that the cops were, in fact, using deadly force disproportionately on blacks and decided to do a study on it. He said the results were the most surprising of his career. Not only did he not find the cops more likely to use deadly force against black suspects, he found the cops more hesitant, more reluctant to use deadly force against black suspects. The problem are, is not racist cops. Lord knows there are racist cops. There are racist doctors. There are racist video show producers. But the problem in the black community is black on black crime. And the left doesn't want to talk about it. The nation spends $1 trillion a year on inner city communities and trying to uplift people from poverty. That has not worked. But what has worked is proactive policing, and the police are not racist. There have been some horrible individual instances in this last year, but that is a my, drop in the bucket compared right. to the daily violence that is taking black lives. We just, have just days ago, Flint, Michigan, in a dollar store, Black security guard asks a woman to put on a mask. She refuses. He asks her to leave. She leaves. Back comes her husband and her sons, shoots this man back of the head. The man is a father of nine, black, by the way. The other suspects involved in the case, black. Where is Joe Biden? Where was LeBron James's tweet? Flint police and the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office say Friday afternoon, 45-year-old Charmel Teague came into the store. Munnerlin ordering her to put a mask on. Police say Teague began yelling and spitting on him. Munnerlin telling the cashier not to serve her. Teague leaving but calling her husband, 44-year-old Larry Teague Jr. The video shows the same vehicle returning approximately 20 minutes later. 
Witnesses tell police and surveillance video shows Charmel's husband and 23-year-old son Raymond Bishop then ran into the store wearing dark clothing. One of the black males started yelling at Munnerlin about disrespecting his wife. The other black male then walks up to Munnerlin and shoots Munnerlin. Munnerlin shot in the back of the head, later dying. His family says the lovable father of six children and three stepchildren cared for his family more than anything. Now I'd like to say something to Mr. LeBron James. He has, of course, been an incredible basketball player. He's given a great deal of time, energy, and money to the community. He started a school in Akron. He has a whole lot he can be proud of aside from his career on the court. He also married the mother of his children something that often does not happen, unfortunately, in the inner city. Remember this cover story of Sports Illustrated? It was about the fact that a large number of people in the NBA have kids outside of wedlock. They quote one person as saying, for every player who doesn't have any, there's another player with two. It is the number one problem facing the black community. The number one problem facing the black community is not fear that some racist redneck is going to track you down with a shotgun when you leave your home. The number one problem facing the black community is the absence of fathers. And on that score, LeBron James has been a superb role model. I just wish he would preach that message instead of telling black people that they're victims. Now, I started out by telling you about this t-shirt. Ta-da! <laughs> this is my new film. It's called Uncle Tom. It debuts on June 19th, and check out the trailers on UncleTom.com. Here's one of them. I focus on three things. Belief in God, belief in myself, and my belief in the United States of America. Being a black conservative is just natural. It's what my family raises on. Faith, family, individual responsibility, education, service to the nation, an entrepreneurial mind. Being a business owner in America is one of the greatest privileges of being an American. I think black Americans should believe and uphold the ideas of constitutional inherent rights. I always felt that if I worked hard that I could overcome the circumstances of my life. I never felt that because I was black or I was poor or a woman that I couldn't do something. Humans are naturally conservative. You grow up being taught to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told you're gonna get something because you just want it. Like, you ain't gotta work for it. But Democrats, they say, hey, we give you everything for free. That ain't reality. By the way, merchandise available, UncleTom.com. Be the first in your hood. I'm Larry Elder. <laughs> We've got a country to save. I will see you next time.